This always kind of scares me. This room has four corners, and each corner has its own problem. It's fun, but it's also stressful. I'm B, a designer and a DIYer with a passion for home improvement. Whoa! I just bought my first house, and it needs a lot of work. A lot of vandalism, rodent, stripper pole here, rat stage here. So it's time to put my skills to the test. I love learning from the pros, but sometimes I'm gonna try things my way. Join me for the adventure. Hey, I'm B. Today, I'm transforming my entryway. So when I first bought the house, I immediately knew that painting this room was one of the first things I wanted to do. It was bright orange. There was this light pink tile on the floor. I knew that I wanted the entryway of the house to be inviting, to be kind of tranquil, to set the mood of the rest of the house. So to transform this room, I'm thinking wallpaper up top, wainscoting below, cleaning up this light fixture, cleaning up the closet area, and a new door. There's limited light in here, and I want to pick a color combination that lightens it up. I love this marigold pattern from Morrison Co. It's one of their oldest patterns. I think it was designed in the mid 1800s. And because the wallpaper is so busy, I just want to keep it very kind of grounded and neutral for the wainscoting below. We got a winner. So this is my wallpaper table setup. The first step is to cut all of your wallpaper. A sharp knife, especially with snap off blades, is super important. So I'm cutting my strips at 48 inches. That just gives me enough wiggle room on top and on bottom. I've added this blue tape here, and that's an indicator for me. From the edge of the table to the blue tape is my 48 inches. Using a metal ruler just to get that nice clean edge, sharp knife, apply a little pressure, clean cut. Below my ruler, I just have a rubber mat so that I'm not slicing into the table. It's great to keep all scrap before you kind of throw things away because you never know where you can use a scrap. It's also really important that you buy extra wallpaper. Another interesting thing about ordering wallpaper is you wanna make sure it's all from the same batch. If you order different batches of wallpaper, you can end up with slightly different little variations in color. So I'm just gonna roll these up, put them to the side, drop some plastic so we can paste. I'm gonna bring my wallpaper back. So we got our paste. Just shake this up. Pasting is just like painting, but you just want a nice even coat over the whole piece. And you definitely need to get the edges because that's where your seams come together and you want to make sure that it's like a nice, secure edge. Wallpaper is a balance of quick and delicate. So now that I've pasted my first sheet, I'm gonna do something called booking. And this is only something you need to do with pasted wallpaper. You're folding the paper in on itself so that the paper can saturate. The paste can become part of the paper. Some people even say that the paper expands a little bit. So I will let that sit before I apply it to the wall. All right, the first piece, here goes nothing. You simply unfurl that top piece and then you go in. Now you wanna leave excess. Here's my plumb line. This is from a laser level. It's showing me what is straight, what is plumb to this wall. Now is where I need my tools. And I have like a palette knife. And this is for smoothing. So I'm smoothing onto that laser level line. I can see a little puckering here. I might just need to come back with a little bit of paste before I do my next. And I'm gonna smooth it up to this top edge and just get a nice crease up there. The key to trimming up top is that you want your knife to be on the side of excess, holding my palette knife below, and I'm just gonna run it along. Now, I ran into a problem here. So the paper's super wet, and you see it bunched up there. I'm hoping I can salvage that. It's bound to happen somewhere. It happened on the first go. All right, well, I'll paste it in, and you and I will be the only people who know. All right. And because it's very wet outside, I think the paper is just feeling extra soggy. With the right tools, you know, it just takes a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of trial and error. I'm gonna take this off here. Okay, 
and this edge is going to be covered with wainscoting. Uh, so you can see there are certain areas that matter, like this top crease, and certain areas that will just disappear. The first one is up, which means it's time for the second one. And now the trick here is you're matching up your seams. You want to bring it just up to the seam of the previous paper. You just want them to like kiss. Ooh, that's a perfect little seam right there. Time for the knife. I'll just snap this off here. Like that. Fresh edge. Okay, on to the next one. Oh, it's a corner. The corners are so tricky. Be very cognizant of this seam, because that is the more, most important part right now. What I feel like I have to do is cut like a relief in here. Doesn't this just look so complicated? I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this. I just have not figured it out yet. Okay, okay, I like what's happening there. We're ripping off that top edge, so I've got that edge. It's because this wall is not straight uh, when it meets the corner that like there's some rippling happening. There's some movement. It's really hard to get this little corner perfect. A wonky wall like this throws off this edge, which then would throw off this edge. So I'm trying to reconfigure it so that nothing is thrown off and it's a little tricky. Probably just match the seams up because you're never gonna know that the pattern is, you know, off of a quarter of an inch. You think? I think. What? Yeah. I think that. Are you saying? Even back. though, look at that, but that over so many rolls, you don't think that's gonna look no. way off? Liam, <laughs> you underestimate my perfectionism. <laughs> okay, I wonder if wallpaper pros are like <laughs> rolling over in their grave by you I'm saying sure that. that. It's because I messed up, it, no, it's because I messed up the corner. That's what it's about. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I mean, I think that's right. Like this seam looks really nice. Once it dries, it'll be nice and it'll kind of disappear. So I'm just gonna leave it because Liam said so. <laughs> Even though the pattern is slanting, that's a little bit more than eighth of an inch. It's a, we're just gonna go with it and hope that it all comes out in the wash. I love wallpaper because there are so many options for any kind of design aesthetic and for renters. And if you just don't wanna deal with the hassle of pasting, peel and stick is a great way to go. Ooh, it's a shoulder workout for sure. I like the sound of that. Good. We're installing a nailer here so that the uh, wainscoting can nail into something solid. I don't recommend doing demo while also doing wallpaper, but it's a time crunch. So wainscoting, wainscoting, it's the same thing no matter how you pronounce it. Hey Liam, should we look at this, uh, at these boards, figure out our pattern? Wainscoting actually dates back, I think, to the 1300s. Traditionally, wainscoting is used to protect the walls in high traffic areas, like a dining room from the backs of chairs or in an entryway, a mud room. I think originally they were used to protect walls from swords and scabbards, um, which is kind of funny, but they've kind of had a comeback in the last uh, couple of years. Yeah, we've got this like nice finisher, <laughs> juggling a lot of wood right now. This kind of does double duty. It closes those edges, but it also can put hooks here. I'd love to have some individual hooks on this board so that it's an easy kind of coat area to take off your coat, your bag, anything, just store it right there. What if we add a little shelf? I don't know, to me it just looks more finished. Some ornaments in the holiday time. Exactly, I like what you're thinking. This is all gonna be painted that neutral territory color. Um, so it's a lot of wood, a lot of painting, but I have the spray gun so I can make quick work of it. And then what, we're just yeah. nailing all this in. That's why that nailer was really important. It'll just secure them even better. I'm feeling this. And then talk to me about doors, door framing. Ooh, it looks good. I like the way it looks. So you have to trim out this door, this door, this opening. We'll all get that trim. I'll get this trim. Great. Because I'm painting all these trim pieces, I'm gonna use the subtle semi-gloss, 
Usually walls are some sort of matte finish, like an eggshell, and trim is more of a glossy finish, just because they're easier to wipe down. Cool, so this takes about two hours for that first coat to dry. So I'm gonna let that go, and then I'll come back and do a second coat. So this is a 16 gauge nail gun, and it uses air compression to shoot these finishing nails in. When you're using them on finishes, you see here, it's just a little pinhole. You can wood putty it and then paint over it, and you won't even see it. We've got a seam, and it looks a little rough right now, but that's what the finishing touches are for. You kind of sand that out, add some wood putty to these nail holes, and it's good to go. So this is the first piece of wainscoting going in. We level there. Ooh, it's sticking. All right, next. Yeah, this nailer makes such a difference, being able to shoot it right in there. This is liquid nails, and it's just a glue that will just run right along the bottom, just another way to kind of adhere this stuff. This is gonna be pretty secure. I guess that's the whole point. Good. Sweet. So that's the this header piece. And I'm just like hanging my body weight on here to keep this wood that wants to warp upwards to keep it flush. So you can start to see the look of the wainscoting, as, but you know, we have all these nail holes. I'm gonna put some wood filler in them and this is paintable wood filler. So the idea is it'll fill these little nail holes and you won't even see them. There may be some touch up painting I need to do too. You know, I'm so much better with my hands. <laughs> And if there's any rough edges, I can just sand them down. So I'm gonna finish filling these holes. I will see you at the reveal. So the room is finished and you can see we hit the wallpaper, we hit the wainscoting. I even had time to move in a couple of uh, my own things. Cleaned up this closet area, got my new door in place, brought in a runner, and brought this original light fixture back to life. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think the color scheme is great, especially for an entryway. It's just so kind of inviting and peaceful. I love the kind of dual tones going on here. They feel like they're part of the same look. And I love the woodwork. I mean, I couldn't have done it without Liam. There were so many cuts involved. There were so many intricate little corners. From working on this project, I learned that when you want your home to reflect who you are, you need to spend some time making thoughtful decisions, spending time with materials, sourcing things that you really love, sourcing things that really speak to you. None of this happens overnight. It's about putting time and effort into it and never be afraid to ask for help when you need it. The entryway is done, but there's so much more work to do on this house. So I hope you'll stay tuned for the rest of the journey. A great craftsman doesn't make no mistakes. They try to make their mistakes less noticeable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> try yes. To hide their, they're good at hiding their mistakes. That's so. exactly what happened here. <laughs> Another one in the books. Right. See you tomorrow, yeah. same time, same place. Got it. All right.